No one is allowed to be mad at me. <laughs> Trader Joe's came out with their own freeze and bake focaccia. And so obviously I had to try this one compared to mine. That's why we're doing another focaccia video today. You can't be upset about it. You're literally not allowed to be, okay? Ugh. Hello and welcome back. My name's Irene Walton. I'm obsessed with focaccia. I'm also obsessed with Trader Joe's. So when they came out with the tomato, when they came out with the tomato and red onion focaccia that I saw in their winter collection in the freezer, I couldn't not do it, okay? So we're gonna make it. I do have another focaccia sitting right here and we're just gonna make a mini tiny baby version of the Trader Joe's one because I owe, well, I don't owe, they didn't ask me to, but the coffee shop that I always go to to write my podcast episodes, which if you're not, <laughs> subscribed, please make sure you check out Bites of History with Irene Walton, thank you so much. The coffee shop I always go to, they're really, really sweet there and I made them cookies for the holidays and they were so appreciative and so nice. So I wanted to make them a focaccia that says their name on it. We're gonna do that on the big one, which you guys will see me decorate that one too, but we're gonna do the mini one just to compare and contrast the Trader Joe's. Also, how freaking cute is this gonna be? Just a little mini baby focaccia. It's nice and jiggly town. Now, the tomato and red onion focaccia, I took a little peek at the ingredients. There are tomatoes, red onions, olive oil, sea salt, dried oregano, dried basil, onion powder, dried parsley, and, dry, and garlic powder. We're gonna do the exact same thing on here, which I'm really excited to see because you guys know I do not love hot tomatoes. And the ones they have in here look like almost like fire roasted. I couldn't find any fire roasted tomatoes. So we're just gonna have to go with what we've got. Is it possible that you guys are tired of focaccia content? Sure. However, I have seen a lot of you guys reach out and be like, you've been posting about this so much, I finally made it for myself. And honestly, that's kind of all I needed to do more focaccia content. <laughs> To anybody who has sent me a message and let me know, thank you so much. I am just drying these tomatoes out a little bit so they're not going in too, too wet onto our focaccia when it bakes. So we'll let those kind of just chill out while we get the rest of the stuff ready. We need some red onion. How is it cut? Sort of just like stripsies. We'll take this outer layer off. How are we feeling? Are we excited for Valentine's Day? Are we nervous? Are we gonna make focaccia for somebody we love? What's the word? Okay, we've got our red onion ready to go. Honestly, you guys know how I feel. Trader Joe's really turns it out sometimes with their frozen items. So I think it might be really, really good. Okay, we, we have the tomato and the red onion. The rest is just seasoning. So let's go. Hello. If you guys wanna make uh, my focaccia at home, you can check out that video. That's where the recipe and sort of the technique of it all is. We're gonna add some olive oil on top. We're gonna add a little olive oil on our little thingies, but since this is a mini, we're just gonna dimple it a touch. We're gonna do some red onion. We're gonna do, oh, that was a lot of red onion that I did. Didn't realize that, okay. Now some tomato. Okay, looking gorge. Oh, and just so you know, I don't have my focaccia out here. This is just the box. I'm doing everything right. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of sea salt. So this is our Malden salt. Then they also use garlic powder, which I wanna be really, really sparing. They use dried basil. Again, just like a super light touch. Oh, that was a little heavier than I wanted. That's okay. And dried oregano. Oh, that was not none. Okay. <laughs> so let me show you guys what this one looks like compared to our Trader Joe's version. They are both going in the oven at 425 degrees. While those hang out in the oven, I am going to get my other focaccia ready for my sweet little coffee shop friends. They're really nice there. I go to this place in West Hollywood called Verve. It's a really cute little place, really chill, like vibes. Usually some good looking people in there, which never hurts. Oh, look, this one has a little tail. Little bell, bell pepper tail. I also, oh good, that all ripped, hell yeah. I'm using my largest size letter cookie cutters for this. Oh gosh, my eye has been twitching all day. What's going on? Could it be because I didn't eat breakfast and just had iced coffee? Could that possibly be the reason? A lot of you guys have told me that you really like these videos where we kind of just sit down and hang out. So I am taking your word for it and I'm trusting you. 
And also thank you, because that's very sweet and nice, and I love doing these videos, so it makes me really happy to hear that you like seeing them. Now, here's the thing. This R doesn't have a little hole in it, so should we do that ourselves? I feel like maybe. Do not do this at home, please. Hey, okay, that looks pretty cute, actually. That looks better. I need another V and an E. We got the letters. Now we can do all the rest of it. Let's just use the rest of this guy up. Dimple, 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 dimple. I just like the jiggliness, I cannot. Oh, it's gorgeous, okay. <gasps> no. Okay, this gigantic bubble has formed that I'm very excited about. I am gonna take this bad boy and just put it off to the side. I'm so sorry that this is gorgeous. Okay, we're gonna take our baby focaccia out of the oven. It was ready a little bit after our Trader Joe's one. We're gonna pop this in there. And then we're gonna do our taste test. Our Trader Joe's focaccia is out. This one's been out for just a couple of minutes so I can handle it, not too bad. It looks pretty much exactly like the picture, which is cool. It's a little bread, it's a little more like golden, which we love. So since this is focaccia, we wanna take a look at the crumb. And whenever somebody, like a baker or a cook or whoever is talking about crumb, it just means like the interior structure of the baked good. This actually looks pretty solid for like a store-bought focaccia. So let's take a bite. I'll take a bite with the tomato. I don't wanna hear about it. So right off the bat, the tomato is still like very moist. And that sort of hinders some of the baking, which is why with our focaccia, I wanted to make sure that we took a little extra time to get some of that moisture out of those tomatoes so it wasn't going to bring too much water into our focaccia and into the oven, and we wouldn't get these like dips in our bake. Let's try a piece with the onion. The onion is also really moist. On the edge, the texture's not too bad. It's definitely baked through. The flavor is really good. The inclusion of the garlic powder Dried onion, dried oregano is so smart. I can't believe I hadn't done that yet. So I'm definitely gonna be taking that for the future. Those parts that are underneath the tomato and onion, like they weigh down the, the bread too much. And I think that if I left it in the oven long enough for them to sort of dry out and for that part to fully bake, I'd probably be burning the ends. Now here's what our little guy looks like. I mean, it definitely looks like the picture of this one too. So it's like, you know, not too far off. Oh, see, I thought I could have baked this longer. I didn't bake this long enough. Well, let's see. Ours still looks really good. <laughs> so here is our internal structure. Even underneath this tomato, we're still seeing a full bake on there. I, I, it is baked all the way through internally. I just could have let it brown a little more, but oh well. It's definitely better. 100% I should have let it get a little bit more brown. I honestly, being a thousand percent real, the flavor on the toppings on the Trader Joe's one are better than mine. But I can definitely work on that for mine. I think it looks really pretty. It's just not as tasty tasty. I definitely needed to let it cook longer, but I think the bread itself is better. If you are in the market for some focaccia, but you don't wanna do the whole like three and a half day process, that's a-okay because the Trader Joe's one is really not that bad. 10 to 12 minutes from frozen as opposed to like 72 hours. Anyway, that's my little focaccia review from Trader Joe's. I know they also have a not frozen focaccia. So if you guys want me to try that one, we can do that too. That was it, I'm gonna go make a little baby sandwich out of this, so I will put a picture of our sandwich right there. I'll also put a picture of our baked fur focaccia right here, and I'll let you know what they said about it. I'm sure this was like a much quicker video, but I just like, I literally could not pass the opportunity up to try this bad boy. I would give it a seven and a half out of 10. I hope you're having the most wonderful day. I hope you have a great weekend. If you're doing your Valentine's Day plans this weekend instead of on the day on Tuesday, I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day celebration. And I love you guys so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Oh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. That'd be cool.